How's it going, guys? My name is Patrick Foley, or better known as Patrick 4D on social media. I'm a 3D artist that works primarily in the ad field, making kind of hyper-realistic renders um, and a lot of product renders as well. So uh, in this part two video of the series, we'll be going over the details and lighting of this hot chocolate. We're going to work on a little bit of the whipped cream, uh, marshmallows, and uh, some cherries. Uh, so I think that should be good to uh, keep going from where we're at. We have some stylistic uh, kind of liquid going here, which, which looks pretty cool. So we can take this liquid, we can manipulate this as much as we want. I kind of like that. Um, and if you followed the last video, you kind of know where we're at. So uh, I think it's kind of cool to make some, uh, let's see, let's make some uh, marshmallows here to kind of pop on this liquid. Marshmallows, of course, easy as it seems. You got a cylinder here. Uh, and we can solo this out for now. Uh, and we can make this uh, marshmallow, let's just make one for now. And what we can do is, uh, what I'm actually gonna do is, uh, let's go to caps, let's go fill it. And uh, pretty much that already looks like a decent marshmallow. So let's go to lines and just add some height segments there. Uh, maybe, say, let's go eight. And then we're gonna hop on a uh, bulge deformer. And we can just, uh, however you wanna make these things bulge a little bit, totally cool. So uh, something like that looks good to me. We don't have to make sure that this is, you know, we can only worry about one uh, marshmallow. Let's go marshmallow. Uh, I think that's how you spell marshmallow. Well, uh, so that looks good. And then uh, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, let's unsolo this stuff. And let's make sure this marshmallow that we have is two size. So let's just scale this by going T. And scale that down to something that we think would look nice. Uh, when I have hot chocolate, I kind of like the mini mush marshmallows. So something like this might work. So that looks good. Um, so we can take the marshmallow and hop it into a cloner. So let's make it a child of the cloner. And let's go cloner object to object mode and render instance and let's drag the liquid to the object and you can see now already we're getting a nice uh, kind of display of this uh, this stuff here so depending on how many we want we can bump this up to like 60 uh, that looks good to me and uh, let's uh, randomize a little bit of this stuff going on so let's go MoGraph oops effector random and if this didn't happen to you, that's because you weren't previously selected on the cloner first. So all you have to do is go to the cloner, effectors, and drag the random effector on top, which it already did. So let's go uh, position. Let's kill the position for now. Let's go scale. <clears throat> Uniform scale. Let's drag that to maybe 0.2. And then rotation. Let's rotate them as random as we can because that is how we get some realism. Uh, and there we're looking pretty good. So, uh, and if these bounding boxes are making it a little bit hard to see what's going on, you can just minimize or hide those bounding boxes just like that. And let's make the marshmallows maybe a little bit smaller. So let's go uh, T and just scale them down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, if you are kind of worried about having these marshmallows all being perfectly within this liquid and you want some to kind of burst in the air, I guess it's, feel free to turn the position on. Um, let's go zero them out. And uh, you're gonna wanna mess with something like the Y, maybe the Z, and the X. A little bit of the X. Um, but you'll see you'll have an, you're having a problem with uh, them intersecting the cups here and you can get rid of that a couple different ways. Um, what I would actually do is go to cloner. Um, let's actually kill the position here and go to the cloner. And this is one of my favorite techniques. Let's go to effector. Uh, let's go push apart. Let's go to 100 iterations and take the radius down to zero and just bump up the radius to something that you're comfortable with, something like this. So now we have, we've killed two birds with one stone. So now not only will the marshmallows not intersect each other, so that's realistic, uh, but now um, we have these things kind of popping off. We got some of the liquids, some not popping off. Let's maybe increase this a little bit. 
27 centimeters looks good. Uh, and the last thing we have to do is kill these ones kind of over here. So you could theoretically take the cloner, or graph selection, and just delete the ones that you don't want. You could do that. Um, sometimes I like it better, um, and it's a little bit more foolproof to go to the cloner. Let's go MoGraph, Effector, Plane. Kill the position. Um, you're going to take the scale, uniform scale, to negative 1. And, of course, that's going to make everything disappear because a negative 1 scale is technically a 0 scale. Um, so you're going to want to go to Fall Off, Linear Field. And you're going to want to rotate this linear field 90 degrees. Um, and you're going to want to pretty much take the uh, Fall Off damn near to 0. And you'll see now that when you drag this thing up, you're getting rid of all these things. So we don't really need these to be anywhere near the bottom of the mug. So something like this is perfect. Uh, and if you want to get rid of that too, you can just hide the field and then it's almost like nothing happened. But you don't have to worry about anything slamming through the sides of the mug anymore. So this looks great to me. Um, all right, so the next thing we want to do is uh, let's work on the... Let's see, I, I do kind of want to save the bubbles for once we're working with lighting and texturing because that's when you'll really be able to see them. Uh, plus, we're going to have to use some octane scattering. So so what we'll do is uh, make a little bit of that whipped cream here. So uh, what we can do is, I think what I used to do, I think what I actually did here is took a helix um, and really made an actual whipped cream looking assortment and just like smoothed smooth it out like incredibly uh much so if we want to just take the uh we can do this so if we solo this out uh, essentially this is going to be like a whipped cream topping thing that you would usually see let's go uh start radius oops end radius something like that and start angle something like this and then I think I took a star, maybe like six sides, something like that, scaled it all the way down. And this will be the thing that's wrapping around. So if we just take a sweep and uh, make this underneath, make the star under the uh, sweep and the helix under the star. Now we have this nice little um, kind of whipped cream looking thing. Um, which of course would be too much, there's too much going on. Uh, it's so rigidy as well. So I think what we'd want to do is kind of, uh, viewport sell this thing off and bring this whole thing up, maybe scale it up a little bit and kind of rotate this to where we want it, something like this. And I know this kind of sticks out like a sore thumb right now, but it's, I don't, I don't think it will in a little bit. So what we want to do is take this sweep, this whole sweep uh, nerve, and go put it into a builder. Oops. Underneath the builder. And then we'll want to take the uh, mesher as well, and put this underneath. And we can see that smoothed out way too much, so we're going to need a little bit more geometry. So let's go down to 5 and go down to 3. And at least we're getting something here. So we can see we're getting some... Uh, I remember with these drink series, I get a lot of high poly counts because of uh, all the volume measure stuff I'm using. So that's totally okay, but uh, just be wary of all this stuff. Um, so I think this looks good. Yeah, so I think we're, we can change the twist a little bit to uh, maybe randomize this thing a little bit. But the first thing I want to do is take a s smoothing deformer because this is looking really janky. And that's looking a little bit better. Um, mess with a, the uh, little bit of this. And just change this nerve down a little bit. Change the height. Maybe go up. Change the angle. Let's add a little bit more stuff going on there. And this is looking pretty good, minus the fact that this is it, it's looking a little bit... OP or overpowered at the moment, 
but we are getting this kind of uh, look. But I think we need it to be a little bit more dispersed, a little bit more going on. So what we can do is um, actually do the same technique we used for the liquid. So we, what we can do is go to the builder, uh, fog, and uh, of course that definitely changed a lot of it here. So we're going to want to take this sweep, um, or I guess the star, is that what we need to increase? Yeah. So increase that a little bit. Um, and then take the, uh, let's go with create field, shader field, and uh, drag that on top of this. So the shader field is going to be uh, kind of getting rid of certain things here. Let's go minimum, uh, shader field objects, and then let's go to the shader field. And within the shader, add a noise. And you can, within the noise, Kind of add this stuff back or delete it. Let's go to global scale, maybe 300. Yeah, so maybe just having like little chunks of it going away, but for the most part staying there. Maybe increase the size a little bit. Yeah. Something like that. And again, I think we still want to have this thing look a little bit more melted. Let's go melt this thing a little bit more. Take the box out to 1.5. There we go. And uh, yeah, this should be good. Um, you can always manipulate that, but that should be good for now. Um, I do want to get moving, um, but that, for the most part, should be good, especially once we start adding that white cream, whipped cream texture to it, um, and that should be good. So I guess the last thing uh, we can worry about is adding a little cherry. Um, of course, we can just create a little sphere as the cherry. Boom. And I'm going to make this one pretty dim, stylized, uh, just to kind of get over the bulk of it here. Uh, maybe adding a bulge nerve, or a bulge deformer. And just messing with that to the point where it looks somewhat decent. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, should be pretty good. Let's go uh, add a little bit of a stem. Just an arc is totally fine. Notice I am rushing through this just a little bit so we can stay on track here. Boom. Not bad. And uh, what I'm going to do is just quickly make this stem. So let's go to the volume builder, volume measure, five. Oops. Five. And uh, yeah, definitely take a little bit more time to make this these kind of objects for you guys. Um, but something like that, as long as I kind of, uh, let's see, let's go down to that. Let's go two. And uh, yeah. Not taking too long to make this one, and then uh, we just want to make sure this is down to one. And we can just collapse this thing. This is just a little cherry stem. Tiny guy sticking out. And we can just collapse these guys and call it cherry. Looks fine to me. Um, very rough, but this is not the main priority of this class. Um, and now I think we're good to be, uh, lighting and texturing this thing for the most part. I think, uh, that'll be, uh, pretty good. So, um, we have this decently looking, uh, we have this decent looking drink here splurging all over the place, but we still need to make the bubbles and that'll come. I did want to show you some lighting and texturing first, so we can get ready for that. Let's go to Octane live view window and just drag this to one of the sides of your screen so you could see it. 
Um, and then you're going to click render. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Not bad. Okay, cool. And uh, so I usually click this lock resolution icon just so you can see the full picture here. And that's looking good. The next thing we're going to want to do is go to Octane Settings. Let's go from direct lighting to pet tracing. Uh, set this to 200 for now. For the samples and the GI clamp to 1. Looks good. Make sure our resolution looks good. Let's go from 1080 to 1200, locking the resolution. This is usually my go-to resolution for Instagram if I'm doing a square aspect ratio, which uh, for the most part works good, uh, especially in this uh, case. Um, and then we're going to want to take, uh, let's go and take a, an object, HDR environment. And let's go texture, let's go color, white. And then we can, uh, we can scale this color down a little bit to maybe 0.4. Then we're gonna add our own lights. So we're gonna go, uh, let's go, uh, actually before we do that, let's create another HDR environment. And we're gonna wanna go to, where is it? Uh, texture, color, white, and type visible environment. So it's still gonna be using the HDRI, or the uh, sky from the first one we used, but only the background of this one. Uh, and we're going to take an object, light, area light, increasing that guy, rotating it a little bit, making a nice strong key light. And this looks good, something like right there. Um, and we are getting a lot of blown out highlights, so the first thing we're going to want to do is, uh, glad I remembered, let's right click the camera, go to Cinema 4D Octane Tags and Octane Camera Tag. And uh, making sure you have the option check camera on, that means everything we apply to this tag, it's going to affect what we're seeing. Um, so we're gonna go to camera imager, let's go to enable camera imager, highlight compression, let's boom all the way up. So you can see we've already gained a lot more of those details that we didn't have before. Um, and we can just take this light, now that we know we have all this um, latitude, we can take this light down just a smidge. And maybe something like that. And then uh, maybe we can take another octane light. Let's go objects, lights, octane area light, and uh, maybe create another long light, but something like a rim for the for the right side. So let's uh, rotate it 90 degrees. <clears throat> drag this all the way over here. And uh, let's just make sure we drag this off so we just get a little little rim light over there, something like that. Maybe increase the light just a little bit. Yeah. So we can always move that. We can always change it. Uh, but for that, it looks good. And we're going to want to make sure for the light, we take the opacity down so it doesn't pop into our frame at all. Um, and let's see what happens with this kind of composition. This looks good. The lighting looks fine for me um, at first glance. Um, and I think we're pretty, oops. I think we're pretty good here. Um, that's looking good. And uh, I think we're on a pretty good uh, streak here. So um, what we have now is we've uh, kind of lit the whole thing already. We've modeled the whole thing. We got the marshmallows, got uh, the whipped cream here, got a little bit of a kind of a fastly done cherry. And uh, we're looking good. So all we have to do now is texture this thing and go over post settings, render it. And we're good. So I think that ends our second video of the series. Um, and the third one, we'll be going over all the other stuff. So appreciate you guys checking this out. Please subscribe, comment. And uh, yeah, my Instagram is at, Pat at Patrick underscore 4D. So that is where you can find my work. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. So thanks again, guys, for checking out part two of the series. Feel free to tune in Friday to check out part three.